And the winner will advance to Saturday's matchup against the winner of the Pittsburgh matchup coming up a bit later as they meet UNC Asheville. We are underway in Washington, D.C. The opening tap is controlled to Old Dominion. What Butler wants to do defensively, Tim, they want to keep people in front of them and so there are no breakdowns. That's when Old Dominion can climb all over the offensive glass. They want to contest jump shots and then block out. Cooper. Junior from Dumfries, Virginia, by way of Forest Park High School with the first bucket of the afternoon. Well, Baysmore plays the off guard, but he's a playmaker, too. Three assists a game there, and that was a beautiful drive setting up the layup. Mack is the consummate combo guard. And now he has the ability to play off the ball, and you can see draining that three, he has tremendous confidence. Uh, he is their best three-point shooter. He's very aggressive and looking for a shot at Tim. Plain zone against Butler is a gamble. They are a terrific perimeter shooting team. Looking at the resume of this Colonial Athletic Association Conference team, Old Dominion, they are very capable of playing on the big stage as Ben Finney, the senior from Portsmouth, Virginia, knocks down one of his own, and it's 5-3. Well, he gets off to a quick start, and he's been under double figures in his last five games. They need to, him to regain his shooting form. ODU is very comfortable. In fact, seven of the eight teams playing today have been in this building this season. So there is no problem with the arena they're in. Right now, Matt and company are seeing a very big cylinder. And Matt and man principles against the zone. Matt Howard sets a screen that gives Shelvin Mack a little bit of a room to get his jump shot up. Hey, partner, no one's missed a shot yet. <laughs> and these are two pretty good defensive teams. Darius James looking down low. Can't find anyone. Gives it up to Finney. Cooper tips it in. This nice work on the offensive glass after Hassell came up empty. Cooper tipping it through. This is what the Monarchs do well, and they feel like they've got to win the rebounding battle by at least 10 in this game, but they're so big they push you in and get on the offensive glass. Howard with the duck down to Smith. This youngster's really made a difference. Goes to the left hand, not there, and it's pulled down by Baysmore. He can score with either hand, and he has really freed up Howard to play much more on the perimeter this year. Six possessions and five field goals so far. James from downtown. Beautiful save, nicely done by Stigall. Mack off the bounce, lost it. Deflected the defensive play made by Darius James. You see that's you see the screen right here, and that frees him up to get the good jump shot. Again, it's man principles, and you can screen against the top of the zone. Matt Howard knows a thing or two about setting picks, doesn't he? Uh, well, he was the anchor inside for this team last year in their run to the finals. Now he's much more perimeter oriented. Well, it's going to be a long day for Andrew Smith if he does not get double team help. Hassell is a load down inside. You believe, G Man, that the more skilled team is Butler, the more athletic team is Old Dominion. Yeah, no, no question about it. And, uh, and that's the, the thing can they wear down Butler on the boards? Matt. That one won't go from downtown. And James takes it down the other way. Finney. Off the front room. Pulled down by Garrett Butcher. Stigall looking down. Down inside, they cannot find Howard. No, he's, he's not had any touches, and he, you know he's, he'll work slowly into the game. He, he will be he'll figure prominently in the scoring column. That'll be a block. Foul goes against Kent Baysmore. Timeout. Just over four minutes gone by here in Washington. ODU and the Butler did it. The NCAA. Stevens, the wonder kid he is, 
Amazing that he could get to this point in his career in such a short span of time. The third member of our broadcast team is Lewis Johnson, and he's got more on that. All right, thanks so much, Tim. Had a nice walk with Brad Stevens from the locker room to the court and ask him what it was like to return to the March Madness court. He said, first of all, awfully exciting. He mentioned the sirens on that ride from the uh, hotel to the arena. Really reminded him of that run they had last year to the national championships. Said it's uh, an awfully important opportunity. He just hopes his Bulldogs play well here as they return. Howard with the tip in. And it's 9-8, to eight, Old Dominion. Ronald Norred, out of the timeout, has come onto the floor. Norred, a former starter on that uh, Final Four team has given up his spot and has been very unselfish in handling it. Total team concept, and there's a beautiful save defensively by Smith. Matt stepping into that three, but it doesn't fall. And this is a Butler team that will not run consistently, Tim, but they will run on turnovers and missed shots. Finney on the offensive glass, and he's fouled. You see the scores of all of the other matchups taking place this afternoon in Tampa. Clemson taking on West Virginia over on CBS. In Denver, the Southwest region with Moorhead State and Louisville. And over in Tucson, Penn State and Temple on TNT. Keep a close eye on those games and you play the role of your own producer. Go over and catch a little bit of it and we'll keep you appraised of how those games are doing as the afternoon and evening progresses. Tough turnaround for Clemson in a long travel day after beating UAB on uh, Tuesday. And, uh, I think because of having played already, could get off to a good start against West Virginia. And he gets the free throws to go down. He gets one of the two to go down. Ryan Eagle and Jim Spinarkle are in Tampa. Vern and Raft are in Denver. And Kevin Holland, Wesley Miller, and Dan Bonner are out west in Tucson. Howard. Who has become a very efficient three ball shooter since moving to the four spot? Gets that one to fall. It's 11 to 10. He's got five. Well, Brad Stevens talked about that. Uh, he played in the post last year. They knew he had that spot up game. And that was a beautiful cross court pass to get him open for the jump shot. Tino Lavasi is coming to the game. Carter, senior from Riviera Beach, Florida. Monarchs by two, six minutes gone here in Washington. Yeah, and it's, it's funny that uh, Butler runs a lot of screen rolls in their man-to-man -man offense, and uh, this team playing a lot more zone, and I think teams may start to play more zone in general, Tim. And what a nice high-low move that was. Howard Andrew Smith. finding Andrew Smith inside. Right, and you know what? When you can catch with two feet in the paint right in front of the rim, you're going to be successful more times than not. And uh, he is a very physical player, an aggressive post-up player. For Butler, number three, trying to check Darius James. And he got picked. But they fought for it pretty well. Shot clock at two, and Lavazzi's shot won't fall. Out of bounds to Butler. That was a shot clock violation. The Tim Edges showed that was a terrific defensive sequence for Butler. They are just very solid man to man. They root you out of the post, and they stay in front of you. Nothing flashy, but very difficult to score against. There's Blaine Taylor. Very high on Eliannis. Uh, a junior from uh, Perth, Australia, by way of Greece. Uh, what a career he's had in the 10 seasons that he's been at ODU. He uh, tutored under Mike Montgomery for many, many years at Stanford, then on to Montana before taking the Old Dominion opportunity. And he's uh, worked wonders and has turned it into a great program and a great destination. And he's had offers, but he says, why leave? Well, Snoop on the glass. And the foul is going to be picked up by Mack after the rebound was uh, taken in. And Rory, if you're Blaine Taylor, I don't think you like what's happened here early. A couple of offensive rebounds for Butler, and that's something that they want to shut off. During that run at Stanford, he was with Mike Montgomery when they made their run to the Final Four. 
set that play up because he challenged the shot on one side of the rim. There's the challenge on that side to force Smith to come in from the other side and you get the block as a result by Carter. Matt looking to get it in to Han. He's trapped. Needs help. Nice work by Carter stepping in and ODU gets the turnover. Markel Delancey in the game number 22. He leaves it for Cooper. Using that pitch wisely, and they're able to get the perimeter shot to fall. Keon Carter with another. The bench has scored uh, eight points for Old Dominion. They've been the difference, and they lead by five. Hong from downtown. It goes crawling off the front iron. Hazemore looking to throw for Delancey. Got a little over anxious that time and turned it over. The Monarchs have the early edge in this 8-9 matchup in the midst of an 8-2 spurt. They used to call Washington and Georgetown rejection roll. Well, we've had a few already today. Mike that I think you need to keep an eye on because uh, Rob Brownell's club at the end of the year as we see the Throw in turnover coming the other way. That's a team that you really need to keep your eye on in the uh, ACC tournament. They got some traction. Just kind of a brain cramp right there by Norwich. It was an easy there. He wasn't even contested and dribbled it right off his foot. But uh, and I agree. And as I said, Tim, I think it's an advantage for Clemson having played a game and faced action already. See how that impacts uh, another Colonial Athletic Association team, uh, VCU, when they get their shot at Georgetown. Amazing to me how unimaginative underlying and un underneath out of bounds plays have become. They just kind of throw a long court out, pass out to half court, and start their offense for so many teams. Baysmore in traffic, shot clock winding down, and the turnover inside. Hassell lost it. Nice dig in by Han, and Butler really committed to double teaming Hassell whenever he gets touches in the low box. Morad, the junior from Homewood, Alabama, running the show now. Giving it up to Hall. Inside motion, using the bank, not there. Tries to save it, and does. And they recycle. Butler's missed their last five shots. They cooled down after that simulating start. Pass is lost inside. Finney comes away with it. The zone for Old Dominion a little bit more active in these last few possessions. Offensive foul. It'll go the other way. True TV presents an all-new series, Big Brian and the Fortune Seller. Every Tuesday at 10 p.m., you won't believe what happens when he turns a house full of memories into the sale of the century. Well, and this is the, the flexibility that Butler has with Smith out of the game that Howard can go back to playing the five, and he really battled his cell that time, forced him into an offensive foul trying to post up. Kyle Marshall now on the floor along with Norad, Mike, Howard, and Sean Van Zandt. Marshall lost it. Nice work defensively by the Monarchs. Darius James. On the wing, Finney. That's his spot, generally. Lost out of bounds. And Butler gets it back. It's a way to get open looks using that cross court pass. Efficiently, uh, Ben Finney had an open look at a three. Andrew Smith back on the floor, replacing Kyle Marshall for Butler. Neither team has scored in the last two and a half minutes. And they are really paying attention. 
close of the mat when he's got the rock in his hand and he looks to penetrate. Van Zan off the balance. Defense is really beginning to take control. Mack runs down the long rebound. Oh, what a nice look inside. Again, those two big men read each other very well as Howard finds Smith again. Well, I, I don't know that there is a weakness in Matt Howard's game. Uh, he's a great playmaker, terrific shooter, really defends well. He's a difference maker out on the floor. And that's the second time he's dropped in the first half. Both of them to Andrew Smith. A steal by Morrow. Well, you talked about it. About how many guys could start the national championship game one year and then accept coming off the bench? But his minutes are virtually the same, Tim, but it's a good combination with him and Van Zandt out on the floor. That's really the kind of program that Brad Stevens loves to have. Unselfishness abound. Baseball drops it off to Cooper. Norad again on the loose. There are uh, Old Dominion's getting some open looks and jump shots and not knocking him down. Matt not there. Out of bounds to Old Dominion. Well, this Old Dominion ball club is one of the best in the country at rebounding the basketball. You see the differential there at 12.2, the first in the country. And they want to at least get that today. If they feel if they only out rebound Butler by three or four, Tim, they've lost that battle. They rely so heavily on their length and their athleticism. And Blaine Taylor is, this is a team very accustomed, Mike. I mean, they, they beat Notre Dame in the opening round last year, and you remember how hot Mike Ray's team was at the end of the season. So they've accomplished uh, really good things against quality opposition in this tournament recently. Leonis giving it up. Baysmore finds James, boy, that was a good read. Well, and somehow James 32% from three, but somehow Baysmore able to do a little tightrope back along the baseline and find somebody outside. First points in the last four minutes for Old Dominion. Player control foul. It'll go the other way. Darius James and company. What is that saying right on the repo, man? It's uh, hanging threes like bridges on a clothesline here on True TV. With Lewis Johnson and Mike Jeminski, Tim Brando, you look at our game summary. Bench points are with Old Dominion. They're a pretty deep team, Mike. But overall, I know you're very impressed with the job that you've seen from downtown. Well, and you look at it, Old Dominion shooting 53% on the game so far, but four of eight from three. And yeah. Butler, that should be an area where they have an advantage, so that's a positive for ODU. Keep an eye as this game uh, develops on just how that bench for Old Dominion continues to stay fresh. Moving pick that time to go the other way. Mike Eade spotted it. And it will go the other way. Now, Chris Cooper. Cooper, Cooper. Yep. Chris Cooper. And, then, and what's happening, the referees have been very consistent with that call. That's the third moving screen that they called in this game. Relatively even in the turnover category, both clubs. Ball security is something that these two coaches really teach. Van Zant with a jump stop and the deuce. Well, we talked about it with Nolan, and he's a pass first point guard, but uh, Van Zant, a very good shooter in his own right, Tim. 47% on the floor, 43% from three. So he can move off, move off the ball and be effective. Ian Carter's uh, athletic prowess has been on display in the game. He's got some hops. There he is. As if on cue, blocked by Howard, stays with it. Ian Cooper, like human pogo sticks, and the foul will go against Andrew Smith. Second foul on the big fella. Well, what a play initially by Howard to recover and get the block inside. But Carter stays with it, and then uh, from the weak side, Cooper. Climbing all over the glass. Frank Cassell has come back into the game to replace Cooper. Eliadis has also left, and Finney's checked in for him. But in general, Tim, I mean, it's a it's a wash on the glass right now. Both teams with nine rebounds, so an advantage Butler there. Cassell so far has not been able to get free as often as Blaine Taylor would like. Now they get it to him with Smith. Smith with two, you'd think they would attack. 
There's a foul over the back. Now coming up on AT&T at the half. Scores and highlights, the latest tournament news, and Naismith Watch presented by AT&T. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. Keon Carter got that foul over the back. Now you'll you'll watch Hassell. He'll really work on that right block. Tim, he's a left-handed player, so he wants to get into the middle that way. You've got to shave that right shoulder and make him turn back. Only a 14 foul committed by Old Dominion. It's really been a well-played game. Two defenses playing that well. Max, no points in the last 12 and a half. Howard unable to connect. Bazemore runs down the rebound for Old Dominion. Hassell really wants it. Very frustrated that he's not gotten as many touches. Well, this is the thing. If Butler really fights you for position, and he has to play a control foul. Nice work by Howard, the veteran, collecting that charge. <laughs> well, we talked about no weak links in his game. We've seen him make a block, and we've seen him take a charge, and it's usually either or with guys, but he is so versatile. Great anticipation on the drive. A cell on that end of the floor, and on this end of the floor, Mike, Matt has not been able to get one to go down since the very early moments. He only threes his first two shots knocked down, and since then, not a good look. And Zant, he runs it home. Anytime you have two guys who can shoot the three, you can spread that zone out, and they've got that right now because you have to pay attention to Matt by the floor. Butler takes the lead by one. Coming out, picks up one of those uh, giveaway fouls early in the game, and that's going to be number two on him. Well, you can see the focus right here of the zone. Everybody kind of, everybody focus on that, and that's where you get it. You have to cross court with the pass, and that's how you get open looks against the zone. Everybody shifted over. That was one of those throwaway fouls, Mike, that you're oftentimes pointing out. Late in games, when your bigs get into foul difficulty, you remember those. Well, and Butler that time, they've really been committed to showing hard on the screen roll, but they had their guard going away from the basket in an unnecessary foul for Howard. Merrick comes away with a pilfer. It has Van Zant winning. Decides to solo. The iron unkind, but it's pulled down by Butcher. Hassell steals it away. Those are opportunities in a tournament situation that you can't give away. That was a relatively easy layup that was missed. And he had to, he had a decision to make. Probably should have passed it off. And Van Zant will be called reaching in against Baysmore. Here's the league, and there's terrific defense coming in with the quick hands, but you can see he's in between trying to draw contact and make the play. And the, the key thing there is to finish the basket and then absorb the contact. See Clemson in West Virginia has gone to the break. Other games uh, underway. With uh, Moorhead State in Louisville and Penn State and Temple over on TNT. Moorhead State and Louisville on TBS. Crimson and West Virginia have gone to the break over on CBS. Yes, inbounded and stolen by Marshall. Norad, Van Zant, Butcher, Marshall, and Chase Stegall, a five on the deck. For Brad Stevens and his team. We talked about them handling the basketball. It's the 10th turnover for Old Dominion. They average 12 on the year. Maybe a little tournament jitter showing yeah. up early. Yeah, just as we mentioned, they protect the ball pretty well. They've had uh, a few floundering possessions of late. Timeout. Back in Washington, where the Monarchs got off to a scintillating start, 18 points and just over eight minutes, but they've only had three points, Mike Jaminski, in the last seven and a half. And it's just that that man-to-man -man defense is stiffened for Butler. Kyle Marshall off the front iron. And the rebound by the Monarchs. They have turned it over each of their last three trips down the floor. Marshall a tough start, 0-3 in this game now. three-pointer on the afternoon. Markel Delancey back on the floor, number 22. And off the ball, a foul spotted underneath. Norad 
in a position to get it. He's the guilty party. We'll be back. All right, Greg, thank you. We welcome you back. And talking about the bigs, West Virginia, not a big team. Old Dominion probably larger, and you want to focus on that. Well, I want to see with Smith and Howard with two personal fouls each, if Frank Cassell can take over in the last three and a half minutes here and get some touches. Butler much smaller along the front line. He's Cassell off to a slow start, only one of four in this game. Former leading scorer for the Australian under-20 national team, Trian Iliadis at the free throw line. <laughs> his inspiration, one of his favorite books, is reading about Andrew Gaze, who uh, <laughs> star for Seton Hall. Never forget that, right? The 89 Final Four. In all the March Madness highlights, box scores, and the TV schedule for us. TBS, CBS, TNT, and True TV at NCAA.com. Our friend uh, PJ Carlison will coach that team. Everyone recalls the block charge involving Ramil Robinson with three seconds left. Our friend John Clockerty, the official that made that call, now the supervisor of officials in the ACC. Kyle Marshall trying for the putback, but it's out of bounds and will be controlled underneath. Hopefully we'll hang on to it. Right, a little bit of a, a little bit of a gamble um, by Brad Stevens having having Smith in the game with two personal fouls. But it's it's been uh, they have more than held their own on the glass team against against Old Dominion. The only discrepancy would be that Smith and Howard each have two personal fouls, and they don't really need to lose either of them against the tall timber of ODU. Marshall setting the pick for Matt who's been silenced since the opening moments. Marshall runs down the long rebound after the Norad miss. <laughs> Mack again trying to negotiate into the paint, and he does so. Beautiful wraparound and using the glass. And that ends a long drought for him. Butler had missed their last five straight. And for Mack, it had been 16 minutes since his last field goal. Ron, he's been more of a facilitator, Tim. He's been looking to distribute the ball. He's starting to be a little more aggressive and looking for his shot. Nice work by Hassell after Baysmore short armed it, and it was saved by Ben Finney. And that's, again, a, con a condition of Smith having two personal fouls. Andrew Smith not being able to battle as hard as he might against Hassell. for three. Isn't it amazing? He's like a quick assassin. He'll get you uh, in spurts. Well, that's the thing with great scores. I mean, they may go out of it for a little bit, but uh, he is really starting to be aggressive to finish this half. Well, he missed three in a row, went 16 minutes without a bucket, and then begins to play the nylon song. What a melody in the month of March. We welcome you back, Tim Brando, Mike Kaminsky, Lewis Johnson. You love the work on the offensive boards by Old Dominion. Well, here it is, and basically he's going left, he's going right and finishing left, which is a tough shot. But to Hassell really ba bails him out. He's number one on this team, 123 offensive rebounds on the year. Tim, senior from Chesapeake, Virginia, getting a lot of help from Ben Finney on that play out of Portsmouth, Virginia. He's more elastic. Boy, Norad's hands. He gets in there. He's very comfortable cutting it in off the bench. And Baysmore comes in averaging 12 and a half points, and he is 0 for 1 in this game and has had the ball stolen from him a couple times, so he is struggling offensively. That's a palming call that will go against Norad, carrying the basketball. And we'll see that one uh, made more at this level of basketball than at others. Brad Stevens looks the other way. You talk about uh, humility, Mike. <laughs> He's something else. They went to dinner the other night, and the team got a standing ovation as they were leaving the steakhouse. That didn't happen to his team a year ago. Hassel, little jump action right on the low block. Right. He's come alive here, and uh, we talked about it. On the right block, Tim, as you're facing the basket, he wants to come to the middle. On the left block, He'll turn to the baseline with that jump hook. Under a minute left in the opening half, and we're tied. Did we expect anything different in an 8 9 matchup? And uh, Old Dominion not impressed with the reputation of playing uh, the national runner up. Mack with under 10 on the clock. Looks to do it on his own. 
The step back three. Well, terrific defense by Bazemore that time. Never went for any of the pump fakes and forced an impossible shot. Both defenses really imposing their will on each other. And we talk about he's the defensive player of the year in his conference, and why he just kept Mac in front of him. No pump fake. The long arms forces a short shot. You now Finney is more of a lockdown defender. Bazemore is considered a guy that can create turnovers for you. He gets to sort of freelance with the help of Finney. Right, the, the front line allows him to roam a little bit and gamble. Game clock winding down. Last shot opportunity coming for Old Dominion. Bazemore in traffic. The answer on the offensive glass by Hassell. And we come to the break. 12 lead changes in this first half. And Old Dominion leads it by a deuce. It's going to be interesting to see if Old Dominion's front line can continue to attack Smith and Howard and pick up those third and fourth fouls early. I thought Indiana coach Tom Crean in our studios on True TV today made a very good point. You, you would expect Howard and and his running mate inside Andrew Smith to be challenged early by Butler attacking the rim to try to pick up an early third foul. Yeah, and uh, you no. Know, uh, also, Tim, you got to look at the fact Butler averages over 20 free throw attempts in uh, on the year for a game. They have not gone there yet in this game, and that's the zone that's been able to keep them out. Right away, Andrew Smith, the sophomore from Indianapolis, coming up Christian High School. Yeah, and I would look for uh, for Butler to establish both of those guys in on the low block. Uh, he has been very impressive. There's a step in and a turnover. Smith giving it up to Sheldon Mack. He's rejected. Chris, Chris Cooper, Cooper knocking it away. Cooper getting back in transition, saving the play. Very few open court opportunities for either team in this game. Most of this game has been played in the half court. Here's the look and getting back that time Darius James cuts off the lane and that allows his shot blocker to get into the play. Hassell leaving the game right away. Deion Carter checking in. Only 30 seconds deep lane. Taylor wanted to check with him. Well, no, he, he was unhappy in that last play. He did not step to meet the pass and that allowed Smith to get the steal. Smith really kind of dominating him early here in the first minute. And, and Hassell telling Blaine, my bad. You're no kidding. Yeah, please get me back <laughs> in, will you, coach? <laughs> He's over there lobbying for his minutes right now. Van Zant. With the 13th lead change of the afternoon, Butler by three. Butler, a much better three-point shooting team, and uh, Old Dominion got off to a quick start statistically in that area, and now Butler's starting to wear them down from the perimeter. Well, it looks like Hassell uh, could be a lobbyist. He's in D.C. He did manage to get right back to the scores table, didn't he? No Gucci loafers on, though, for him. <laughs> Finney counted on a foul. <laughs> Here's the look. You see the push in on the weak side, and that's what you have to do. Block them out a little bit farther on the perimeter. Chase the goal really undersized, trying to keep Finney off the glass. Yeah, he got away with rooting him out a little bit, didn't he? He had that derriere in a position, used his strength, and uh, rooted out Stagall. Well, that actually could have been a foul against Finney. They tied at 32. Butler's decision making against the zone is pretty unique. Van Zant's got the talent to dish it. Smith really with a pretty good pass, unable to reel it in. And uh, Ray Perone gets some help from Mike Eads. The ball will be on this end of the floor, control to Butler. Sheldon Mack to trigger it in. Blaine Taylor's name has been mentioned prominently for many a coaching opportunity. He's done a great job, as has Stevens. Stagall feeds Mack. Stagall the offensive rebound and a tap out by Smith. Butler getting all the 50-50 balls right now. Good swing of the basketball to Stagall. That one went crying off the front iron. Right, if, if you're Brad Stevens, you got to be happy with the looks that you're getting right now. Some open threes here early. The dunk down to Hassan, and he's fouled. That's the idea, is it not? Go and attack. 
the bigs. That would be three on Andrew Smith. That's the thing you want to you want to have a war of attrition inside, and Hassell has got a very wide body. You can see it; he just caught it too deep. And this is the one thing that Butler really does: they can root you out of your post-up position. But he caught with both feet in the lane that time. Coming into today's game, he was sitting at 1,262 points, 904 boards. Now only 12 Division I players have at least 1,250 points and 900 boards in their career. He has just been a stat sheet stuffer for the Monarchs. Ten points today. And really struggled to get looks. Kind of a pedestrian offering when you think about it. That chicken wing out, so it's an offensive foul. His second, and uh, Howard showing some strength in there, putting the body on him with the two fouls. Unnecessary foul that time by Carter. I thought he really had Howard buried that time, but just wanted to give himself a little bit extra down low. The presence of mind that uh, the Howard has is pretty incredible. Played beyond his years a season ago, and, uh, and now a stalwart veteran. Smith will jump on the baseline and the iron kind he drops it through. Brad Stevens a little bit of a gamble with Smith with three fouls allowing him to play in this game. Butler prides itself on defense and, and playing with intelligence. If I'm Old Dominion I'm going right into Hassell. Force the issue with Smith. Make him defend. Oh, he, he gambled and lost and now Howard picks up his third. Coming over to help after Smith went for the steal, Hassell is fouled. Anytime you gamble in a post like that and you come up empty, it is bad news. And that's maybe a function of him wanting to cheat a little bit and not get himself in foul trouble. But what he does is put his teammate in a bad way that time. Yeah, and I think that's what Brad Stevens wanted to bring him over to chat about. But he's going to stay with him. And, and I think, Mike, because of that offensive rebounding that you touched on, is that is that the reason in your mind that Stevens is gambling with both of his bigs playing with three this early? Uh, and there's there's not a ton of size behind them. We, we saw them in the first half when they when they substituted, they went a little small. So I don't know at this point that uh, Brad Stevens has many options. I mean, he can go with Butcher, Han. I mean, he but, can go but small. Six, but they're at six seven. Yeah, and, six, and you're, seven, and you're, six one. Then you're right. really giving away post ups in the offensive glass. So. Kyle, Kyle Marshall's uh, another player, but again, he's more of a combo player. You give up a, a lot of size, as you mentioned. Well, nine of the last 12 for Old Dominion have been scored by Frank Hassell. Old Dominion by one. Louisville and Moorhead just underway. Over on TBS. Out of Tucson, Penn State, and Temple. And over on CBS, Clemson, and West Virginia doing after. Look up at the top of your screen and you can check those scores. But on the other end, I thought Andrew Smith this half has done a nice job of posting up, and he's been getting deep post position and an easy right hand hook. 15 lead changes in this game. A sell. Again, pretty good defensive offering considering count it and the foul. That's number four on Smith. And that's marked down when that occurred and the decision by Stevens to roll the dice. It came up snake eyes with Hassell. A feeding frenzy on the offensive boards. Go get you some. Now well, they've got a big time low post player in Farid. That's Donnie Tindall at Moorhead. But look at the foul difficulty for the front line, uh, Mike Butler. And clearly, now with Smith saddled with four, it's imperative that Howard not pick up his four. And I think he's uh, he's better equipped to play with three. And uh, Smith, this is his first real extended action this year. But I think now for uh, Butler, their three point shooting has to show up. That's their strength, that's their advantage over Old Dominion. 
I think they can play a two-point game defensively, but their three-point shooters have to get on fire. Lored, Van Zant, Mack. Another three-guard look, guys that can really handle it. Butcher is coming to the game along with Howard, and a beautiful reversal by Howard. Now remember, we talked about it last year that Howard played primarily in the post, so he is capable of going in there offensively and excelling. Here is Butcher. 32 in the game, and Baysmore is fouled by Van Zant. Using his size and strength, this is a beautiful little up and under move by Matt Howard. Again, he did a nice seal right there, a clear path. You can't give him angles to the lane and angles to the basket. Kip Baysmore at the free throw line to shoot two. And this is a guy who's been really quiet in the game, has not scored, missed only two of his uh, field goal attempts, and he scores 12 and a half on the year. So the last guy, you know, when a guy's struggling, you want to keep him quiet, but you bail him out, put him in the free throw line, maybe he finds a little rhythm. Let's go over to Lewis Johnson. Lewis? Well, Tim, with this game, 15-15 left, 38-39. Uh, in the last bench timeout, Blaine Taylor telling his guys they got to keep pushing the ball up and down the court. And he made a point to say that they need to look for Frank Hussell early in the possession because he knows Smith and Howard have those fouls. Right, get, those, get the big guy play inside out. Make sure he's getting touches because obviously they're going to have to collapse and double team him. Outstanding contingent from Indianapolis on hand for their beloved uh, Bulldogs of Butler. Five minutes in, Shelvin Mack has a score. Right on cue, Mack from downtown off the front rim. James comes away with a rebound. Yeah, he's, he's got to figure prominently in the offense now. Great pass inside, but a real good recovery by Norred. Scrambling that one up for Hassel, and it leads to a turnover. And Baysmore will pick up the foul with the reach. A continuous coverage of the Division I Women's Basketball Championship. Begins Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2 and ESPN3.com. For more information on game times and matchups, go to NCAA.com. Oh, and my hometown, by the way, gets to host the first round NCAA tournament. Uh, Shreveport, Louisiana will be home to the NCAAs on the women's side for the first time. And I'm sure the Chamber of Commerce was pleased that you got that in there. <laughs> God's country is happy. Thank you. <laughs> Louisiana Tech and Texas A&M among the teams in that region on the women's side. Off the ball, Wally Wuteki spots a foul. Howard got involved, and as did um, Keon Carter. The foul goes against the, the Chris Cooper, Cooper rather than the the Carter. Yep, he's in the game along with the There's Carter some, down low. Brackets to. Uh, Pittsburgh, UNC, Asheville coming up. There's Pitt looking on. Gary McGee with the headphones on. I think he's got those really good Bose headsets. Those babies are really good. Howard looking for the cutting butcher. Disrupted. But it'll go the other way. Another turnover committed by Butler. They're going to follow. They're going to call a push off on Butcher that yes, time. Yes, they did. They did. There's the look you see. They're going to double team Howard. They're going to come off Butcher. Butcher and a good yeah. dig in on the weak side that time. He became the defender after that pass was a little bit awry against uh, Darius James. Darius comes James. in from the weak side and gets in the way. Nice defensive slide. On the other end, James Alina. Howard the rebound for Butler. Just over six minutes gone here in the second half. Howard bumped by Cooper again. Two quick fouls tagged against him. So he becomes the first Monarch with the longest third foul. Again, I think Old Dominion can live with this, though, Tim, and they're going to bump inside, but you can see the perimeter of that defense is extended. They want to stay at home on those three-point shooters, so they'll live with Howard getting touches inside. You see Cooper leaving the game with three, but then they come right back with Finney, Hassell, and along with Carter. I mean, Mike, this is really a Big East type of front line that Old Dominion has. They've got plenty of size. Right, and they showed up. We talked about uh, them and how they figure prominently in the uh, rebounding statistics nationally. 
Laura Pumps. Count it. Ronald Laura, the junior from Alabama, pumps one in. And he is the weakest of their perimeter shooter, so a good sign for Butler for him to knock it down. But we talk about a guy who was a starter in the national championship game, invaluable experience. Ilianis is on the floor. That one does not go from deep. There's a foul on the glass along with Carter and a foul underneath. And I think they may have gotten Howard. And and so that's four. And the cell is unhappy. He was un not able to take it. Look at the ball movement here. You've got to have a swing of the basketball. One, two, three passes. You get an open look. Terrific ball movement. Well, they got a break. The foul went against uh, Norad on the other end of the floor. His second. So Howard still has three fouls. And Carter at the free throw line. And every time there's a whistle, Mike, inside, you can almost feel the collective lump in the throat for Howard. And he knows with Andrew Smith out of the game with four fouls, he has got to stay in this game. As Old Dominion continues to shuffle more bigs in. And you'll be interested to see if. Uh, if Brad Stevens will gamble and take uh, just give Howard a little bit of a blow around some TV timeouts as this game winds down because there's no option with Smith with that fourth fourth foul. Old Dominion primarily a zone team, but a little bit like Syracuse, they rebound well out of it. Howard retrieves it, gives it up to Han, and gets it back for three. Pitcher, the follow. And that has really got to be disturbing to Blaine Taylor with a smaller lineup in there. You would think the front line of Old Dominion would not give up second chance opportunities, but Garrett Butcher giving him some positive minutes. Oh, Blaine yeah. Taylor wants a timeout. Old Dominion. How about this follow? Just a thing of beauty by Butcher hanging with it. Nineteen lead changes in this game. Wow. All right, Greg, Markel Delancey's come out of the floor for Old Dominion. The two bigs for Butler now out of the game, Mike, as they've decided to go small. Howard is with, with the three fouls, but again, taking advantage of that TV timeout zone, just as you suggested. And getting another TV timeout on top of it. Absolutely. We'll be right back. Second round action in the Southeast region. An 8 9 matchup on the line and a 43 42 game between Butler and Old Dominion. Mike. And still not a free throw in this game for Butler being outscored by 12 in that category. That being said, since uh, Smith got his fourth foul, they've outscored Old Dominion 7 4. They've made five of their last seven shots. And uh, out of the timeout, Matt Howard's come back onto the floor, number 54 for Butler. And for the first time, uh, Blaine Taylor extending his defense to take some time off the shot clock. And Zant really tough jump stop. Butcher, Butcher again on the offensive glass, and he's fouled on the putback. And Howard really made that play, and it was a bit of a gamble. You don't want to pick up a foul on that end of the floor, but he got the tap up, kept it alive for Butcher. The foul was submitted by Hassel, his third. Well, the matchup in Tucson is uh, at last underway. Penn State and uh, Temple. Kevin Harlan, Reggie Miller, and Van Bonner over on TNT with that matchup. Moorhead State and Louisville already a great start for the 13th seed there on TBS with Bernard Lundquist and Bill Raftery and Clemson, West Virginia. Our other game with Ian Eagle and your old running mate at Duke, Jim Spinarco on CBS. Keep an eye on all those games up at the top of your screen as Butcher collects both. And it's 45 to 42. So now going into the bonus, at least Butler will be able to get there that way in the penalty, but those are the first two free throw attempts of the game for them. It has to tell you, doesn't it, Mike, about the kind of um, defense that, that Old Dominion plays, that zone protects them from foul difficulty. Yeah, and it's a, a very few post-ups. Smith was, uh, he was relatively successful inside, but these are huge minutes, and how many times do you see somebody step up? Garrett Butcher, it's his time right now for Butler. 
Finney, nice look to Hassel inside, and he missed the easy one. Oh, to have that one over. Well, for instant analysis and highlights of every tournament game, log on to SI.com. That's the second or third point blank shot that he has missed, and uh, Hassel is very, very upset with himself. Well, Old Dominion's missed their last five in a row. They got six. But there they are again, Finney on the offensive glass. And the reach in foul against Mack. Here's the bunny missed inside. Boy, just go up and slam this one, right? Why, he really got Butcher on his back, and that's an easy finish. And at, at the very least, uh, use the backboard, not just try to lay it over to the front of the rim. Sheldon Mack got the foul. His second. And Finney at the free throw line for one and a bonus. And Frank Asell is walking right in front of our position right now, just tapping his head and shaking it. Uh, just really frustrating. He knew he let easy in a very close game. Those points are precious. I'll tell you what, Butcher has been an outstanding role player for Grant Stevens, hasn't he? I mean, he has done yeoman's work with Smith out of the game with four fouls. 32 and white. Perfect complimentary player for Butler. Matt. Howard taps it to Butcher. What presence of mind by Howard. Well, you know what? And it's again, you talked about the offensive rebounding, and it's a small team out there for Butler, but they are getting second chance. What a terrific heads up play by Matt Howard. Five point lead for the Bulldogs. Baysmore, a little scoop to the hoop that won't go, and Finney is thrown to the turf. Matt got a hold of him. What a nice tap pass this is. Boy, presence of mind inside. See Just an assist. And you know what? It's an even better play for Butcher. He's be looking up at the rim, but he saw what Howard was going to do, and he was able to make the catch and finish. That should be worth more than a dime. That should be a quarter, don't you think? <laughs> at least. Yeah. Two bits, four bits of that. We talked about guys stepping up, though. Garrett Butcher has given Brad Stevens some quality minutes off the bench. Six points, six rebounds. There you see the foul difficulty. Smith leading the way with those four fouls. And it's really important that Howard play smart, and he has. Saddled with three. Matt just got his third. Cooper, the lone monarch with three for Old Dominion. Brad Stevens has massaged this uh, frontline foul situation about as well as anyone can hope. And there's a little over the back cheapy given up by Old Dominion's Keon Carter. That's his third. Cheapy foul, but the difference is now it could result in a possible two points. And you know that you just have there are rebounds that you can get and ones that you have to lay off and you don't want at this point Butler getting easy opportunities and you put an 80 percent free throw shooter at the line. Sheldon Mack. 79 percent on the year at the strike. Everything is for sale and nothing is off limits on True TV's number one hit show Hardcore Pong. You won't believe what's in store every Tuesday at 9 p.m. on True TV. Chase the ball checks back into the game for Butler. Sophomore from Newcastle. Boy, how many great players have come from Newcastle, Indiana, huh? And well, now you get to, uh, you give Mack a little bit of a rest. Let's see if it goes all the way down to under the eight minute mark. James from downtown. Very famous. He's a pass first point guard, capable from the three point line, but they really needed that offense. So Stigall, Morag, Van Zandt, Howard, and Butcher, the five of the four for Butler. Baysmore comes in there with another steal. Defensive player of the year in CAA, and Stigall gets the foul. One of those few errors that you'll see from Howard. He anticipated a, a move by his player, his fellow teammate that simply wasn't there. Well, and it's always it's tough to make a pass out of the post unless you go opposite baseline, but to go right up to the center of the court, there are a lot of hands right there, especially in that zone.
watch every tournament game live online with NCAA March Madness on demand at mmod.ncaa.com. Andrew Smith comes back into the game for Garrett Butcher. Job well done by that young man from Edgewood High School. He's played in every game. He's come through some times with knee troubles, but uh, really did the job while Smith was saddled with the fourth foul. He averaged under two points and uh, just about one and a half rebounds on the season, but comes in and gives you six and six and some, some tough defense. Absolutely. That's stepping up. Yep. That's coming off the pine and getting it done. Tough pass. And Zant tries to save it. Cannot. Finney gets it back. Little scoop. Missed it easy. How many, the rebound. how many layups has Old Dominion missed? Point blank range. Oh, Finney as well as Hassel. <laughs> Smith feeds Howard from downtown. Pays more of the rebound for ODU. Well, a terrific defense by Keon Carter that time. His length bothered that shot. Butler leads it by one. Smith on the floor, number 44 in white play with four. Kings not there. That one will be over the back. Foul picked up by Chris Cooper. Boy, these easy chances, the anxiety of it all, Mike. Especially in the open floor, you get a turnover, you got to convert, he forced him to the left hand, but that's just, that's a shot you have to make. That's the fourth foul on Cooper. Hassell returns to the game for Old Dominion. Smith is 69% of the strike. That's as good as a turnover. Go right at him. Go right at Smith. Hassel not even looking for his offense. Pays more with a ball pick. Well, they turned down a couple of good looks, haven't they? Out of bounds to Butler. In that sequence, Mike, Old Dominion had three players all of whom you'd think would be excited about taking a shot, turn them down. It's amazing what happens in tournament pressure, Tim, with eight minutes to go, how uh, the ball moves around a little bit quicker than it might normally, but the Old Dominion now one for their last 11. They are down to 37% from the floor. Hassell stepped into the passing lane. A couple of really casual possessions for Butler. Pays more, gives it back to Carter. Foul committed by Norred. Will return to our nation's capital in a moment. The ball and many of them have been point blank layups that have been missed. If you would like to make a donation to help in the ongoing relief effort for the disaster in Japan, log on to CNN.com slash impact. And obviously, our thoughts and prayers with all of those in that devastation from the tsunami. The pictures are really haunting, Tim. They're almost yeah. like a like movie created. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to believe it's reality. 20 lead changes in our game. Not artistic, but exciting. Just what you'd expect from an 8-9 matchup. Howard off the feed from Sheldon. That's just two guys who have played together for a long time, and that was a great seal inside by Howard against the zone. 51-50. Seven eleven remaining. Well, Bazemore was making his move, and Mack in a position to check him. 
Check out the seal right there and the great vision that's going to come the pass right down the gut. And he just kept him on his back the whole time. Terrific offensive play by Matt Howard. Brad Stevens now is going to have to start thinking about protecting Shelvin Mack as well as he just picked up his fourth foul. From Lexington, Kentucky, by way of Ryan Station High School, will take a seat. Norred returns to the game for him. So I've had a missed one and one, and then two missed free throws there, so two empty possessions at the line. We're up to 21 lead changes now. Six points, the biggest spread of the game for Butler. On Smith, the rebound. Lorraine, that was looping to Howard, and he's fouled. Ben Finney will pick it up. I tell you what, Butler does as good a job as anybody I've seen against field, feeding the post against the zone inside. Again, another terrific seal. Matt Howard does such a great job with his body. Well, you have to give, I think, a lot of uh, credit to the patience of the Butler guards, whether it's Norred or Han. They take their time in aligning which way they want to go with that interior pass as you look at the foul difficulty now with Mack and Smith both with four. Cooper for only with four. Could become a battle of attrition for both coaches, Taylor and Stevens. We welcome you back to the Southeast Region second round here in Washington, D.C. Tim Brando, Mike Kaminsky, Lewis Johnson here on True TV. Matt Howard at the free throw line for Butler. Darius James. Keon Carter working against Howard, taking it right at him. Smith the rebound. Pretty good job, Smith on the weak side, sealing herself. Right idea, but Matt Howard knows how to defend without fouling. There for Han, an air ball snared by Baysmore. And oftentimes that leads to a fast break, but there were four white jerseys back. Good transition defense by Butler. Kings. Smith the rebound. Baysmore nearly took it away, but it's saved on the deck by Van Zant to Nore. No field goals. The last four encounters. Grind is underway as the pressure amps up. So these two teams are on the floor for the first time in this region. And that foul will be against Hassell, and that's his fourth. Let's go over to Lewis Johnson. Lewis? Well, Tim, in that last time out, Old Dominion head coach Blaine Taylor telling his guys to push, push, push the ball up the floor, and then make sure you grab as many rebounds as you can, but a strong emphasis on pushing the ball here late in this game. Hey, he wants to get transition points, but they're not there, Mike. No, and it's a, there's good transition defense, and the other thing is they don't want to play against Butler in the half court, but that's what they've had to do for most of this game. Not many easy opportunities. See those scores up at the top of your screen. West Virginia has been taking some control against Clemson in the second half of that game. Bulldogs by four with five of change remaining. Van Zant gets the steal. On the scrum, stolen back by Old Dominion. It's a foul will go the other way. Why well, Darius James did a terrific job of getting the ball back for his team, but then the offensive foul and Smith is down. He may have gone down to the head. Yeah, Bayer might have caught. I don't know if, uh, if uh, Baysmore got him with his left arm coming up through his chin. He's the guy that was obviously going to be the anchor of this team next year, but it's his progress as a postman that's allowed Howard to play on the perimeter. 
Butcher now in to see if he can continue his strong play. Well, he has been a magnificent compliment so far. Six and six coming off the bench. All of them coming in this half. He's collected a lot of garbage on the offensive glass, too. Just put it on the rim and he'll sneak in. All right. Good ball reversal with one on the clock. It's not there, but it's run down by Howard. But he turned it over. Wow, and he just, he's saying he got hit, but you can't. That is, uh, that is an unusual mistake that time by Howard. You've gotten the offensive rebound after using 35 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, he's claiming that uh, he got hit on the elbow. Beautiful rebound. You see James I, working I, with him I, there. I, I did not see a foul. I just thought that that was a poor decision at that point in time. Yeah, I think that's a play on. Williannis on the floor now for Old Dominion. Number 15 in blue. He can pump it from downtown. Running off that court, he drives with a runner. And a foul. But you're going to get called on the foul inside. Yep. And you see he's, who, me? Well, at least it's not on Howard, right? <laughs> That's the second foul on Darren Butcher. But this is, this is sound defense with Iliadis. You want to make him a two-point shooter. This is a little push-off now. I, I don't know that Butcher's capable of moving Hassell out like that. <laughs> well, first they bought. Brought you the real coat taste and zero calories. Now they're bringing you the most impressive NCAA experience known to fans. Get in the game at CoatZeroSocialArena.com. They have a good theatrical class at Old Dominion, don't they? I'm sure they do. 54-52. <laughs> Either that or a position in sales. <laughs> Neither team with a field goal over the last three minutes and 50 seconds. And your perimeter shooters are Matt and Van Zandt. Matt not there. There's Butcher again keeping it alive for a recycle. Wow, what a player off the bench today for Butler. And right now a plus five on the glass for Butler, an area that Old Dominion really needed to dominate in this game. Well, and they decide to take the time out. They're going to get Smith back into the game. I think Brad Stevens recognizes this is a huge offensive sequence. Andrew Smith back on the floor after getting his uh, brow swept and the Band-Aid on. And uh, you would think now because we are in a commercial timeout zone on the next dead ball, this is a good opportunity to get Butcher out and set something up with the two bigs. Created by Smith. Well, and that's it. He set the screen up top, and that's what, again, you can screen and use man principles against the zone and uh, full recognition by the backside. James, Baysmore, Carter, Hassell, and Finney, the five on the floor for Old Dominion. James giving it up to Finney from downtown. Howard with the loose ball will go the other way. Foul was committed by Baysmore. It'll go the other way when we come back. Take a look at our tournament summary. Colonial Athletic Association teams in this tournament. Three of them and five from the state of Virginia. Uh, by the way, Clemson, uh, a winner of the first four, has been eliminated. West Virginia knocking them out earlier today. VCU, one of those teams from Virginia validating that, and one of the teams from the Colonial validating a controversial at large. Pick the win. For Butler, number 54, and there you see our game Sheen. reset. Both teams are in the double bonus. Butler with three timeouts remaining, Old Dominion with two. Well, I'd say the committee came out 50 50 on that. Uh, UAB got absolutely blown out. Uh, Virginia Commonwealth on the other end got the job done against the USC team that couldn't hit the ocean last night. 
58-52, Bulldogs by six. Hassan. Baysmore found him on the low block. That's fair. They think with, uh, with Hassan, you've got to work over Smith. He's going to be a little reluctant, although uh, you're now and you get under two minutes and you've got to start amping up your defense. 18 points for Frank Hassan. Few times in his possession for all dominion. Van Zant, not there. Rebound by Finney. Darius James motors. And he threw it right to Blake. That ball was uh, deflected by Mack. It'll be ODU's basketball. Nice catch by Blaine Taylor over there. Yeah, and he was in three-point stance, too. <laughs> Ready to do something with it. <laughs> so that's not going to earn you any extra playing time. <laughs> <laughs> Go with the bounce pass, Coach, and I think he's going to take a timeout. Blaine figured he had the ball. He might as well call a timeout. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Gee, the game reset. Butler with the... Uh, Three timeouts, Old Dominion now with two. And double bonus for both teams. 58 to 54, minute 48 in total. A lot of white shirts around Hassell inside. Hassell in traffic, nice ball fit. And he gets it to go. Tim, he was buried on the baseline, but was able to bail himself out with that move, the one dribble in the ball fake. Monarchs now only down by two. And Smith have uh, managed to stay eligible in this game with the help of Butcher inside, who's now on the floor for Smith. Clock winding down, Elliott deflected away by Hassan. And retrieved by Keon Carter. So now Old Dominion shoots for the tie or the lead on this possession. Not enough air on that pass to Howard. He was open. Who wants the shot? Hassell is calling for it. Puts your smaller defenders there. On the offensive glass, it's knocked away, but lost by Norad. That was a beautiful dribble drive by Finney. And in effect, Hassell had set a pick, but he could not get it to go. Another layup inside missed by Old Dominion. If they had made half of them, they'd have had a, they'd had a lead. Now, you make them go left to try to finish right, which is not easy, but they've had a lot of issues with finishing. Timeout, like in a sense, with only the one second discrepancy between the shot clock and the game clock, essentially they can hold it for the final shot of the game. I mean, that's got to be your mindset, one would think. They're down by two, but well, they have the option it, if they want I, to hold it's, it. It's risky to play, and, it's, and the thing is, you, you know, you go for a three. Right here, that Baysmore is your best three-point shooter out on the floor. It's their option, obviously. One would think they're going to get the first good look and take it. And uh, this foul by Van Zant sort of bails them out. Uh, and now we're in the double bonus, of course. Van Zant with his third foul. Well, and you look at it, Baysmore only 66%. I don't know that you wanted to foul in that situation, but this is the big area. If you're looking to extend the game, that uh, Butler is a much better free throw shooting team than Old Dominion. Four out of six today. This one's a tie coming up. comes into the game for Norad, so defense for offense for Brad Stevens in his perimeter. Here we go, tied. The eighth seed, the ninth seed, on True TV in D.C. You want to make absolutely sure you get the last shot at your butler. Ten ties, 21 lead changes. May we see another? Old Dominion on a 6-0 run. This is a veteran move. No timeouts. They know what they want to do. Shelvin Mack will initiate the offense. 
Hands in. In trouble, Smith. The tap down. They've got to review it. It, just, it looked on the first blush like it was good, Tim. And what a terrific play. You want to get something going to the rim. Be aggressive. He actually fell down. Smith keeps it alive. A tap out. And Howard right there. And that is clearly out of his hands. That's a good basket. Yeah, that should count. And how about this? Smith and Howard with four fouls managed to navigate through the game, stay eligible. And win it. Well, Van Zandt tripped, and that was just a terrific play by Smith to keep it alive. And Howard, in those instances, a lot of times you rush the shot to try to beat the clock. The officials say yes, it's good. And Butler beats Old Dominion at the buzzer, 60 to 58. How about that? I go back again. They won the battle on the glass, which was a huge thing for Butler, and it's an offensive rebound that wins it at the end, but the experience paid off.